Then the next question is, what of continuing in the word of God? What of Bible study? What of Bible college? The Lord Jesus Christ said in John 8, 31, he says, if you are, that for those who believe, he said, if you continue in my words, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth that you know shall make you free. What does it mean to know? It means to be intimate. So it's not just head knowledge. We're speaking of an intimate knowledge of truth. Truth merges into you. And because truth is now a part of you, the truth that is part of you frees you from all those things, all those rules and regulations, laws and other things that were keeping people bound. That's what Lord Jesus Christ was trying to say to them. That you Jews, you say you now believe, let me tell you, you must continue in my teachings. You must continue in my doctrine. And as you continue in my doctrine, you will come to be intimate with my doctrine so much so that when you see a wrong doctrine, you will avoid it. You will not be able to allow it in. But if, as long as you can allow wrong doctrines in, then it is, it is because you have not acquainted yourself intimately with the doctrine of Christ. So to continue in the word of God is not just um, a mere going to Bible school or a mere receiving some lecture somewhere and saying, now I'm born again. Let me read this as we as we get close to uh, ending this discussion. In John chapter 15, from verse 4 to verse 8, this is what the Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples. Abide in me. Abide means to dwell. Live in me. And I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. The branch is attached to the vine or to a tree. As long as that branch is attached to a tree, it is receiving sap from the tree. The, vine, the, the, the branch does not produce sap. The branch needs sap to survive. But sometimes there's what is called a knot that is created in that attachment. It just comes in there and blocks the flow of, um, it's like a disease. It comes and blocks the flow of sap to the branch. At that point, you see a viral tree, but then you see a, a branch that is dried up. That's what it's trying to express here. Let me, let's read verse 5 now. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. That knot is there. That disease has come in and has blocked the flow. As long as the flow is blocked, sap cannot get to the branch. If sap cannot get to the branch, the branch withers. And after a while, depending on whether it is thick or thin, it falls off. Let me read verse 6 again. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are born. Speaking of etern uh, eternal hell here now. Hell in eternity. In verse 7 it says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, that is my words find your being receptive to live in. You are living in me. My word is living in you. He says, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. So you see that asking and receiving has to do with whether Christ is in you and his word is in you. And then in verse 8, he says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. The essence of this abiding, the essence of continuing the word of God, is that you are bearing fruit. What fruit now? The fruit of the Spirit. Because as you are abiding in the word of God, the Spirit of God is Elucid is, is um, teaching you that word, explaining it, expounding it, making it clearer and clearer. The same one verse that you have in your memory, the Spirit of God can use it and teach you so many things from one verse. And you have a better understanding and you now are able to apply it to living. It's not just the hearing, but the application. When that takes place, then you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. You don't have to go for laying on of hands to be set free. The truth of God that is in you, 
He sets you free completely. Nobody can now come and tell you that there's a witch pursuing you. There's somebody chasing you. You will tell the Bible, get away from here. Do you know the God that I serve? But when you can still be deceived, then you have a problem, which is why the Bible now teaches in, uh, in Ephesians chapter 4 that those who are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers are given that office to teach people so that they are not deceived, they are not turned to and fro by everyone along with the fact that they are being taught to be able to do the work that God wants them to do. 